Hello, YouTube. It's me, John Avenger, once again, and we're going to end February with a, on a high note. And this is the last movie I'm reviewing for movies with colors in the title. It's a 2013 action film that I have been dying to review ever since I got here on YouTube. It came out the same year I debuted on YouTube in 2013. It's a Roland Emmerich movie from that, that uh, a lot of people overlook. This movie did not deserve to bomb, and that is White House down basically die hard on a, in the in the uh, white house you had two die hard in, in the white house you had this and you had olympus has fallen which i have reviewed already so a die hard style thriller that will make you pulse race pulses race i agree with that this movie is freaking awesome i need to say that right now a non-stop thrill ride that will have you leaping out of your seat i saw this in the theater and even though it was pretty empty i still had a great time with this movie it's a long movie. It's two hours and thirty-one, uh, two, uh, two hours and thirteen and eleven minutes. It's almost as long as The Force Awakens, and I got more entertainment out of this movie. Yes, it's very stupid. It's a very dumb movie that basically uh, it starts off pretty serious. Like you have Channing Tatum going in for an interview so that he can try to uh, work with the, the Secret Service so that they can he can uh, work with the President of the United States, played by Jamie Foxx, basically his version of Barack Obama, who was our president and uh basically you know the interview kind of gets cut off because he talks with maggie gyllenhaal she's in the movie too she's really good in the film and uh, he kind of gets uh you know like overlooked then later in the movie uh, you know because of movie magic a bunch of terrorists take over the white house and they take over the entire building they're shooting up the building they're taking hostages and they're just, you know, taking control of everything. And this time it's a bunch of white guys. It's not in, in uh, Olympus Has Fallen. It was Asians. It was, I think, Koreans. Yeah. And this movie has a massive, awesome cast. You have Channing Tatum. This is one. Of, this is the role he did after 21 Jump Street that really made him, solidified him as a freaking action star. And I like him as an actor. I always liked him. A lot of people hated him for G.I. Joe, uh, Rise of the Cobra. He even said it. he didn't like it, but... That's the first film I saw with him in the theater, and I kept seeing films of him ever, ever since. I like Step Up. I even enjoy the first uh, Magic Mike. I know it's not for everyone. Josh refuses to see it because he thinks it's gay. Well, it's not gay. It's actually a good story and a well-done uh, movie. Uh, 21 Jump Street was hilarious. I like his... He, he was super... The voice of Superman in the Lego Batman... In Lego... The Lego movie. And, you know, he's just a fun actor. He really has come a long way since Step Up. Uh, Jamie Foxx, this is one of his better roles. Uh, this is not him being a cartoon like in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, this is after his Oscar nomination for Django Unchained, I believe. And he, he did a good job here as the president. He plays it straight. There's a scene where the villain cat grabs one of the henchmen, grabs his foot. And he says, don't touch my joy." <laughs> I love that scene. That, I mean, this is an action comedy. If you're expecting this to be dead serious, like like freaking like uh, Saving Private Ryan or something, no, this is not that kind of a movie. This is an action comedy. There's plenty of humor in the movie. You also have Maggie Gyllenhaal, Jason Clarke. He plays one of the henchmen. Uh, uh, my friend uh, Sean would know him. He was in uh, one of the Planet of the Apes sequels. I think he was in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Also, you have uh, Richard Jenkins. He's one of the guys in the movie. He's the old guy that was in Cabin in the Woods. And you have freaking James Woods as one of the main villains. He is fantastic. He has gray hair. He's a great actor. He has stage He has stage and screen presence. You know, every time you see him on screen, you do not want him to leave. Because the guy has come, you know, he's just come a long way. I mean, he's been an actor for over 30 years. And he, he, he freaking has earned his spot. This is the Blu-ray DVD combo pack that I got at Best Buy for $6.99, uh, $6. It's worth it. It's worth every penny. I even got a digital copy. Uh, you also have, uh, in the rest of the cast, you have um, uh, a young, very young, uh, what you gonna call up-and-coming actress who I think is absolutely adorable, uh, Joey King. She plays Channing Tatum's daughter in the movie. You also have the red-headed chick from Twilight uh, that plays the mom. She's not in it that much, though. So. Uh, but she's good in the film for what she has to do. And there's a lot of action in this movie. You want action? This movie has a ton of it. Roland Emmerich doesn't shake the camera. He doesn't freaking, freaking put shaky cam or uh, bad edits or he's not putting the camera like this. He keeps the cam. He doesn't do, uh, you know, freaking angles like a, na uh, a narrow angle like in freaking um, 
Battlefield Earth. No, he, a Dutch angle, yeah, he doesn't do that. He keeps the camera steady. You can see all the effects. There's some great practical special effects. There's CGI in it, a lot of explosions and things, but oh my God, is it wondrous. I remember almost every action scene in this movie, the scene where they're shooting up the White House, the scene where there's the helicopters, uh, ex you know, exploding things. You have the scene where freaking Channing Tatum and, 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 and uh, Jamie Foxx are in the freaking presidential limo and he and he loses they use a rocket launcher to try to shoot the bad guys and he loses it's like how could you lose a lot rocket launcher and i'm like yeah it's a ball and a half i had great a lot of fun watching this in the theater i laughed my ass off with the jokes it's a very long movie but it's so fast paced it does, you don't even feel it and uh you know the cast really helps with this movie because they're in on the joke they're not winking at the camera it's not meta but oh my god is it a lot of fun it reminds me of the 80s action genre, you know, action film genre, where you got a muscle-bound everyman who gets into a situation that he, you know, is not ready for, but he just he comes out swinging. Channing Tatum, yeah, he he's he not he's not like Bruce Willis in Die Hard, but he has enough charisma to make the movie work. Because he's just there for an interview, so he could just be in the Secret Service. His daughter is there for a tour of the White House, and she's. Uh, filming, you know, for a YouTube channel, and and uh, Jamie Foxx is he he says a little speech on there, and his wife in the movie, the first lady, is played by Garcelle Bouveas. She was his girlfriend in in a uh, uh, fancy in uh, in uh, what you call it in J the Jamie Foxx show. So I remember that it's a nice reunion with the two actors. It was good to see her again. And uh, yeah, like I said, the action is so plentiful. There are so many action movies nowadays where there's like two action scenes. Or you have to wait an hour for something to happen. No, hell no. This movie, within the first 30 minutes, shit is going down. There's explosions. There's freaking glass breaking. There's freaking a fight scene in the kitchen. There's freaking, you know, things go tossing around. There's blood. There's freaking... There's a scene where one of the tour guide... <laughs> he, the tour guide is... is, is uh, I think he's like uh, he, he hits one of the terrorists with like a freaking uh, with, with like an, an antique in the in the freaking White House, and there's a helicopter propeller that's going right him right near him, and he's like, ah! and it's like it's so funny. Oh my god, you got to see this movie, guys. Nerd Pack, watch this movie. I guarantee you're gonna have a ball and a half. Block Roman Emmerich's freaking Independence Day two out of your mind. This is way better than Independence Day Resurgence. This should have been a huge freaking hit, just like Olympus Has Fallen. It's a very good premise, and it works. It's PG-13, but it just goes for the punches. It's like a freaking, you know, it's like a freaking Bourne film or uh, like, like the freaking Mission Impossible movies on freaking speed, man. Just so much freaking action. I'm like, my God, this movie is so action-packed, and yet no one saw it? What were the freaking general public thinking? Yeah, you went to go see freaking uh, other movies that came out in 2013 that were shit. And yet this movie, like Now You See Me, I think came out in 2013. That movie made money. This didn't. Why? Why? That movie's not an action film and it has a stupid twist. There's no twist here. Uh, J James Wood basically is a he's an old man that has like a like a medical condition and his son was killed I think because he he blames Jamie Foxx for that and they don't mention 9/11 so don't worry this movie will not offend you and uh, there are problems in the movie I'm not gonna say there is perfect like I said it's a very dumb movie like the the henchmen are very over the top there's one with a southern accent and uh, you know there is a scene I didn't like where. Um, one of the henchmen hits Joey, Joey King, and she's very young in the movie. She looks very scared. I don't like violence towards children or young teens. That really pisses me off, but it doesn't affect the rest of the movie. Channing Tatum kicks the ass of all of these freaking terrorists. Uh, Jamie Foxx is really good in the film. There's a He says a speech to uh, James Woods, and he says, fuck you. And I'm like, yeah, they have, have an F-bomb in a PG-13 movie. And it's not wasted like an apocalypse where Michael Michael uh, no uh, Michael Fassbender's like, who the fuck are you? No, that's a stupid line, Sean. You cannot defend that line. That line came out of nowhere. Here, it's earned, and it's a PG-13 that has some balls, has a ton of action. It doesn't drag for 20 minutes. It doesn't have 150 characters that that don't do anything. It doesn't have freaking bad CGI thrown in your face. It's like a, that that like that's just eye candy here. Practical effects. 
a freaking solid cast, a fast pace, a good premise. The, the film looks fantastic. I've seen this movie in, uh, several times, and every time I watch it, I'm like, wow, this actually looks like a movie. It doesn't look like a green screen the whole time. It doesn't look like it's freaking shot you know, to shit like the Taken sequels. It's not a freaking movie that has black, a bad, like, yellow filter like some of Van Damme's later work. It doesn't have a shitty cast. It has a good director that knows what he's doing. Yeah, I will defend Roland Emmerich as a director. Unlike Michael Bay, this guy actually made more movies. He has a better batting average. Independence Day, I love that movie. White House Down, I enjoy this movie. Day After Tomorrow, that's a fun movie. 2012 is a guilty pleasure freaking disaster movie. That's a better movie than Geostorm. It is, honestly, because it knows what it is. It knows who it's catering to. This film knows exactly what it is, and I freaking thank God for this. Because I'm like, in a world where there's like lackluster action movies, that there's too much talking, or there's laughable dialogue, or there's freaking movie that has too CGI blood, that only worked in Deadpool and, like, 300, and Watchmen to an extent. But here, I'm glad it's practical effects, squibs, real freaking action, you know, the, the real helicopters and real sets and, and things blowing up in a good way. Like I said, this beats the shit out of any of the Transformers movies. All of them. The first one and all the sequels. And Bumblebee, 7, 8, 9, 10, 25. I don't care. This movie kicks the shit out of them. It's not two and a half hours. Hey, last failure. You know why you people hated you? Because you don't have a freaking coherent plot. That's why. This does. And there's a lot of characters. So there is no excuse. This movie flopped. It didn't deserve it. It should have made two, at least 500 million worldwide. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get it. This movie is awesome. I bought it on Blu-ray because I wanted to show you guys. In my next update, I'll show it to you again. It's worth your time. It is. The acting is fine. It's not like, oh my god, this is so painful. No. It knows what it is and it freaking runs with it. And I appreciated it. Critics didn't get this movie. Got like a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes or something like that. I, I don't understand. I don't understand it. At all. Yes, it's dumb, but it works. And I want to defend this movie because it got so much shit when it came out. It did not deserve to bomb. I know it came out like around the same time as Man of Steel. I get it. This is my kind of action movie. There's no stupid flashbacks. There's no villain that's a cartoon. Except for the henchmen. There's a good plot there. It doesn't drag for two and a half hours like The Last Failure. And also it has a cohesive plot. And the entertainment value is so high for me in this movie. It's so freaking high. I was so bummed out when I went to the theater and I, and I saw this movie. I had a great time. And then I saw the box office numbers and I was like, this isn't doing well. It doesn't deserve it. Like I said, there were better movies. That, that, there were worse movies that made money than this. Worse freaking movies. In 2013, 2014, 2015, 16, yeah. Like I said... I will see this over Aquaman coming out in December. I'll say that right now. Or Solo. You know why? Because I cared about the characters here. I cared. See? A black lead that doesn't die. And he's not just a comic relief. He plays it straight. Jamie Foxx's acting is good. He's not a freaking cartoon. Like an Amazing Spider-Man 2. That was just embarrassing. A waste of its talent. And I really enjoy this movie. Action galore. Great freaking lines. A good humor that doesn't feel freaking forced. It has a good supporting cast. A cute little girl, Joey King, who I think is absolutely adorable. I'll see Wish Upon once just to see her because I think she's wonderful. Just very, very cute actress. Wonderful eyes. Just very, very sweet. And uh, like I said, it has an American spirit. At the end, she's waving the American flag. Yeah, fuck you, UK douche nozzles. Fuck you. You can never make a movie this good. Never. Ever in a million freaking years. You know why I say that? Because Americans have pride. We have the freaking pride of the red, white, and blue. Yeah, the red, white, and freaking blue. Your reign of terror will freaking end in 2020. Yeah, we're going to get more movies directed by black directors and, black, and having black leads that are not from the UK that freaking kick ass. That's why Black Panther's been making so much, a shit ton of money. Not just because it's Marvel, because it's a good movie. And this movie is also freaking good. And it should have made at least half a billion dollars worldwide. It should have. I don't want to sound too political, but yeah. This 
is why I love America because we make movies that actually sometimes when you when you strike gold you get movies like this when you strike shit you get movies like Last Failure oh pretty effects yeah it doesn't explain it doesn't save the plot or the characters or the shitty actors from the UK that can't act their way out of a bag this Barrett I don't even think it has anybody British well good thing because Roland Emmerich is German. But he's a, he loves American actors. That's why he always puts them as leads. Will Smith, freaking um, Matthew Broderick. Yeah, I like the, two, the 98 Godzilla. Shoot me. I don't care. That's a movie. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, uh, who else he puts? Uh, I think James Spader was in Stargate. Yeah, you have him who was Ultron, by the way. And the 2012, you have Amanda Peet, who I adore, and John Cusack. They have great chemistry, great effects for the time. And like I said, he's a competent director. Is he perfect? No. But I can forgive Resurgence because I have this. And it's a fun to end movies with colors. Even though I didn't review that many movies this month, I tried. And white, yes, it has the word white in it, but it has a, a, a multicultural cast and it works. And finally, this movie is very entertaining. If you have not watched it, Get off your ass, rent it, see it on Netflix, rent it, uh, you know, rent it at the library, like, for, that's for my, a nod to my friend Sean, uh, stream it on freaking Put Locker, just watch this movie, see it on FX or whatever, it is worth your time. I would, I would recommend watching it uncut, because if you see it with the curse words cut out, it kind of defeats the purpose, but this movie's awesome. I, this was in my top 10 in 2013, I think like top 10 or 15, I really enjoy this movie. And it kicks the asses of any of these freaking move, wannabe movies done by these freaking, freaking you know, uh, English muffin crackers that they think like, oh, we're going to make the greatest Star Wars movie ever with a bunch of Brits. Yeah, and it didn't freaking work. Financially, it did. Critical-wise, yeah, very mixed reaction. Yeah. This movie got critically bashed, but at the end of the day, it's going to hold up more than these freaking Disney War movies. Easily. Because it's PG-13, it's a hard PG-13. This is not childish, freaking watered-down PG-13s like nowadays. But yeah, White House Down is awesome. Has some problems. Yes, it's cartoonish at times, but... And there, there is a scene that kind of makes you cringe with the little girl, but... Oh my god, the rest of the movie is just badass. And Channing Tatum is great in this. This is one of his better performances. So, if you like them in Rise of Cobra, Sean, he kicks even more ass in this movie. And he's not phoning it in. He's just... He's, he's fully committed, and I love that. And I, I miss that about the action film genre. And they didn't get a shitty sequel. Thank God we didn't get that. And I do like it more than London Has Fallen. I can easily say that. That's the sequel to White House. Uh, Olympus Has Fallen. But yeah, White House Down kicks so much ass. And I wanted to just say that with some passion, some fire. So I'm not like, uh, yeah, I don't want to be tired. In March, we're going to get to movies starring children. And I'm going to have a lot to say. So take care, guys. I hope you like my new hat. I'm going to keep wearing it in my videos. Uh, this has been an interesting winter. There have been some times where I was bored to death, but getting movies like this for ultra cheap is so freaking worth it. And yeah, see White House Down. It's an American-made movie, and I love it. And thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in March, guys. Later.